let's learn about the art and science of a video game shaders. What are shaders? Well, if you're working with Unreal, those are your materials. It's basically any visuals that you have on your models. You have your 3D model, and on top of that, you have some material or shader that basically dictates how it looks like. So let's have a look at what we have uh, suggested here. So in the world of video game development, creating immersive and visually stunning environments is a top priority. That's not true. <laughs> okay, we got the first sentence and already wrong, disagree, completely disgusting, horrible, I'm leaving. No, uh, so um, it is somewhat important, like not gonna lie. There is a pretty strong argument that making your game immersive and visually stunning is really important. But we also have a lot and lot of games that uh, where visuals actually don't matter at all. And they are really, really successful and very popular. So it is important, but it's certainly not a top priority. It very much depends on the kind of a game. I, as far as I'm concerned, gameplay is always king. And when it comes to games, what should be always the top priority is how fun it is to play it and then everything else. So this is just, no, I disagree completely. Let's continue though, let's give them time. One of the most essential tools in a developer's arsenal for achieving this goal is shaders. Uh, shaders are powerful pieces of code that dictate how light interacts with the objects in the game. That's actually a really good way to describe it, I like that. Uh, giving a rise to, to breathtaking visuals. In this blog, we will explore the role of shaders in video games and introduce related software and utility tools that contribute to crafting these captivating worlds. Alright, the magic of shaders, let's learn about it. But what do we have here as a material, by the way? It's just super basic stuff. Okay, just some translucency with a base color. Cool. Uh, the magic, sh magic of shaders. Shaders are specialized programs that run on computer's GPU. They define the appearance of uh, materials and behavior of light and the rendering of effects in real time. Essentially, they are responsible for what you see on your screen in a video game. Finally, like good description. I don't have much to complain about there. Especially the part like, yes, this is what you want to focus on. It is rendered by GPU. That's why you also want to outsource as many stuff to your uh, GPU whenever you are writing something. So if you can do animation inside materials, that is probably a really good argument to do it there. If it's something where you don't care about collision, you can just let your shaders handle it. There's a really good argument for that to do that because your GPU has a lot more, it's a lot more optimized to compute these kind of things than your CPU. Uh, vertex shaders, these handle the position of vertexes in 3D space. They transform the shape and the position of the object in game world. Uh, less commonly used, and it depends what you are doing, but yes, absolutely, that is the case. Fragment shaders or pixel shaders dictate the color of an individual pixels, determining how an object appears when rendered. That's probably what you are thinking more when you are talking about shaders, usually. But both of them work very much together, just to be clear. So that usually people focus on the pixel shaders. Let's have a look. Types of shaders. We got here a vertex shaders, which we just covered. So we are covering it again, apparently. People are responsible for transforming the 3D position of vertexes and generating uh, 2D screen coordinates. Very much so here we are gonna upscale, downscale, all this nicely done with a simple time node running on a fraction and sinus and it's being multiplied by minus 10 to figure out how much it should, should scale and multiply by a normal in the, on the vertical shader. It looks like if I see it correctly. And it gives you this really cool effect. Very nice. I like to usually, usually the simplest way how you go about it is just the, with this process, you get like time, time and sign and just like transition between up and down, which are like different vector informations, just simple animations like that. It's gonna help you a lot, especially if you like imagine that you are doing something like uh, uh, you need a rotation of the wheel or you need something like uh, moving up and down of uh, whatever animation or moving between two vectors. You can very easily do that with uh, materials, especially if it's something that play doesn't interact with and you don't care about collisions and you're gonna save yourself a lot of performance. Fragment shaders or pixel shaders. I have not quite heard pixel fragment shaders yet actually. I'm very much used to hearing about it as pixel shaders. And usually you just just to be clear, you usually like all of that is handled inside one material if we are talking about Unreal. Uh, so it's not like we have these two materials that do these things. Uh, determine the final color of each pixel on the screen. They control how materials appear including shading and reflection and refraction. Reflection and refraction. Look at that. I'm gonna pretend I know what they mean. Or what's the difference? I have retro pixel shader and retro pixel and easy to apply shader effect. Okay, I don't know what this point demonstrates, but uh, yes, indeed. <laughs> Uh, geometry shaders, those are again vertex shaders, pretty much, just fancy. Uh, they can manipulate primitive shapes, adding complexity to objects in real time. Grass is usually very common. You see uh, you see usually trees, like imagine that trees are just waving like in the wind, and things like that. That's almost always had and handled by this process of geometry shaders, which is modifying a uh, vertex shaders. Compute shaders handle general purpose computation tasks and are used for non-graphic processes such as physics simulations. Oh, do something with shaders? I 
sure. This is paddling noise, it looks like, but I don't quite understand what this topic means. Our shading languages, we have it HLSL, which is high level shading language, primarily used with Dynetics and Windows, JLists for OpenGL, and CG C for graphics, developed by NVIDIA using gra graphics programming. I am less familiar with uh, CG, but it may be that I am just using it, not being aware of it. Either way, when you are writing a material inside Unreal, you are doing similar things as you are doing with Blueprint, right? So so you producing nodes to generate a HLSL code. I think it's HSL in Unreal. Yeah. And then that gets uh, so you basically do that material, it gets translated into HLSL and then that's actually being processed by GPU. So our shader development software is a Unity shader graph, visual node based editor for beginners, Unreal Engine material editor, Unreal offer material editor, it's kind of the same thing, just a lot more advanced. Shader toy, online platform for experimenting with shaders and sharing with community. I'm actually not familiar with that, but let's have a look. It's in beta. Wait, was it written by... No, okay. <laughs> I've just been being a bit cautious here. I've seen this before. Okay, we're running into some pretty strange stuff here. What is this? What am I looking at? Okay. Oh, this is running in the browser? Oh, this is pretty cool. Also, this is using to generate the actual space. And image vector, vector fragmenting color. Cool. That is very lovely. But into different. Mm. Okay, here we are actually looking at what we need to look at. We have here some variables. This is H uh, HLSL, right? I'm not too used to writing it myself, so. I'm gonna just guess that is the case. That is certainly interesting. Okay, I'm gonna dive into this shader toy later. This is it. Saving it. Uh, now, yet the utility software for textures and assets. Uh, usually how you would go about it is to, you are gonna actually put the shader and material together inside something like Unreal. And uh, you are gonna input there either generated textures, so for example noise, like pattern noise, or uh, any other, I guess, rationale could be used as a texture generated utility. Or you are gonna very likely have some texture generated by paint, Substance Painter Designer. Uh, anything else for the matter and let's look at a future of shaders now we're getting into something interesting so let's see as technology advances as so do shaders i sure hope so real-time ray tracing techniques for achieving incredibly realistic lighting is becoming more accessible ray tracing shaders are used in modern games like a cyberpunk 2077 great game and minecraft <laughs> it just made me really love the contrast. Okay, so what are the two uh, games that show the highest level of visual fidelity in modern gaming? That's gonna be Cyberpunk and Minecraft. Important. Really, really important. It's true though. <laughs> it's so funny. The relentless pursuit of realism in gaming has led to the adoption of real-time ray tracing and groundbreaking te technologies like Unreal's engine Nanite. I think he may need he may mean Lumen here, but that's fine. Uh, Nanite allows for a film quality art to be imported directly into the engine, eliminate the need for time-consuming con optimization. Uh, these innovations are redefining game development, uh, pushing boundaries, and blurring the line between the virtual and real worlds. I suppose. Uh, okay, we did not learn that much but thanks i'm gonna still clap here can i clap here please yep let's go let's go one more time it's pretty well pretty nice to be done actually i like it shaders are the artists and developers tools for crafting stunning visuals in video games they dictate how light interacts with materials and objects providing the magic that immerses players in the breathtaking worlds shaders have bright future as advances in technology and real-time ray tracing promises even more realistic and immersive gaming experiences uh, with related software and utility tools developers and artists have all they need to make their creative vision reality oh uh, well, yeah one thing i wanna wanna I'm pretty happy about CD Projekt Red, the studio behind Cyberpunk and Witcher. It's going to be developing next project in Unreal, and they are going to be bringing a lot of their know-how and how to make uh, their game so beautiful. Because let's be real here, there is pretty. I don't. I, I wonder even if there is a game that looks better right now or that pushes visual fidelity further than Cyberpunk uh, while keeping a stable frame rate. Let's be real on that. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep in mind the real-time rendering. A lot of it is pretty cool. They are probably have some some nice deal with uh, uh, Epic to bring a lot of these new things for Unreal into Unreal. So we are all gonna benefit from that and that's pretty amazing. That's pretty cool. awesome. Yeah, let's look forward to that. If you like the article guys, you should go follow the writer here because it was quite insightful. Comes nicely in contrast with how much I complained about the first sentence. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Let's clap here. That's it, see you around.